Welcome to your Farm and Home Show. My name is Joanna Coles and this morning we're visiting with Adam Huber. He's the Allen County Extension Agent for Agriculture and Natural Resources. And today we're going to talk about an interesting little species. Mm -hmm. I know you have found them in Allen County. Yep. We've had them in Warren County. Um, that's the hammerhead worm. They actually have been recently found in Kentucky uh, for over the past couple years when we started really seeing them. But the ones that we're talking about, the hammerhead worms, they're actually an invasive species that comes from Southeast Asia. Mm -hmm. So they are definitely uh, something that we want to take precaution and, and kind of know how to identify them. Absolutely, and they're a little alarming when you first see them because they can be quite long. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. They can be, you know, up to 10, 12 inches long. Uh, they're kind of nasty looking, honestly. Um, they kind of look like a, a like a little slimy snake. And they're, then they have that little hammer head. Yep, that's kind of yep. what makes it distinct. Yeah, so that's kind of how they get their name. Mm -hmm. They, you know, if you know what a hammerhead shark is, that's kind of the shape of the the head of the the hammerhead worms. They're typically brown in color, or, or sometimes like a honey color. Um, they sometimes will have stripes on them. There's a five stripe. There's a three stripe, and some of them don't have any stripes at all. So that's kind of, you know, kind of what they look like. And a lot of times people, when they see them, they might think they're a snake and their sure. first instinct is to chop them up. Sure, yeah, yeah, you definitely don't want to do that. So the, these worms um, can reproduce asexually. And so if you chop them up, then you're basically creating another worm. <laughs> so that's definitely not what we want because they do pose some, some concerns to some of our beneficial mm -hmm. uh, insects, so. So what are they predators of? So our, our earthworms, that are beneficial, you know, decomposers, uh, uh, snails and, and slugs is kind of what they like to feed on. We don't want to chop them up, but we don't want to necessarily go and grab them either. Yeah, so they, they do have a tetrodotoxin inside of their bodies, um, which is commonly known with the puffer fish. And so that is a, a toxin, which if you touch the, the hammerhead worm, you're not gonna die, but it could cause some skin irritation, things like that. It's advised to wear gloves if you do handle them. If you do find them, uh, get rid of them as quickly as possible. So how do we get rid of them? Yeah, so that's a good question. Um, much like snails and slugs, like we just talked about, uh, if you pour salt on them, it will kind of dissolve them and, and, and kill them. Uh, the best way to be for sure that you've gotten rid of you know the, the said species is to wear gloves or, or tweezers and put it in a like a ziploc bag and then pour salt in the bag that way you know 100 percent sure that it's not you know escaping the bag and 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 um dispose and, of that properly yeah yeah and this was probably yeah and no adam a lot of times when i've gotten calls people are more concerned about their pets sure. you know if, if their pets are going to come into contact with it because yeah. it is it is a toxin and they are yeah. concerned about it but it's not something that we need to do preventative. People have talked about going and getting, you know, um, pest control and things sure. like that to come out there and treat their yeah. entire yard. Um, they're not everywhere and we probably need to do it on a case by case basis. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, you don't want to go and treat your yard, you know, you know, I want to pour salt on your yard. That's obviously bad for your plants uh, and you're not going to do a good job of, of controlling anything. Mm -hmm. um, so basically, you know, once you find a hammerhead worm, that's whenever you want to take the control measures. Like you can't really do preventative measures with any insecticides or any pesticides, anything like that. So uh, you really have to find them. So they like uh, warm, uh, damp places. So like under rocks, uh, you know, leaf piles, things like that. Or if it, you get a lot of rain all at once after a dry period, a lot of times you'll see them. They might be on your sidewalk, things like that. That's when you really can find them and, and can get them to control them. Yeah, just treat what you see right then. And if people are concerned, they, they don't know, they can always take photos and yep. send those into the extension Absolutely. office for identification. Absolutely, yep. And I know you've had them brought into your office and we would just caution people to use yep. gloves, put them in a bag if they're gonna bring them in. Absolutely. Yep. All right, Adam. Now, do we have more information at the university on hammerhead worms? Yeah, so you, you can you know just type into to Google uh, hammerhead worms University of Kentucky and Kentucky Pest News actually has a, uh, a whole write up on the hammerhead worm, gives you some identification, um, you know, control methods, things like that once you do find them. Basically a lot of the stuff that we've talked about today you can find there uh, on the Kentucky Pest News. And Dr. Uh, Larson with the University of Kentucky, he's one of our entomologists. He's got some good information out there as well. So lots of stuff that you can find online. Uh, just make sure that, you know, if you do look stuff up that it is a credible source from a university and uh, then you should be good to go. Thanks for watching and have a great day.